when you and your company had a really, really big win uh, recently in response to this shockumentary uh, we're seeing on Netflix, Seaspiracy. What do you, can you tell me a little bit about that? Hi, I'm Dave Mergel with Acrocraft Brand Portfolio and Acrocraft Seafood Innovation. And this is where we talk to thought leaders around the seafood sector and influencers around the world, all about using brand marketing to reorient towards the consumer, all about growing seafood consumption here in North America. So today we're going to take on these guys, the shockumentary that broadsided and shocked the seafood sector. And it really was unprepared to mount a defense except for one person and one company stepped to the forefront really quickly. And that was Biomar, a forward-thinking feed company based in Europe, and their global head of brand and branding and marketing, Catherine Breyer. In fact, Catherine and her company, Biomar, had a really big win pretty early on. And that was forcing these guys to retract and correct one of their many false statements they made in the movie, on both their movie and their website. Pretty impressive stuff. Today's conversation with Catherine was excellent. We talked a lot about the role of brand marketing and the future of the seafood industry. We talked about her story uh, growing up as the daughter of a dairy farmer in Australia and the role that played in her career choice. And most importantly, the big win she had against this shockumentary. I hope you enjoyed today's conversation with Catherine Breyer as much as I do. Well, good morning, Catherine. I'm here with Catherine Breyer. She is Global Head of Branding and Marketing with Biomar, a large global uh, aquaculture feed producer. Catherine, welcome and thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Dave. And Catherine, you and your company had a really, really big win uh, recently in response to this shockumentary uh, we're seeing on Netflix, Seaspiracy. What do you, can you tell me a little bit about that? It's important that we as a sector stand up for misinformation. And uh, the the claim was completely outrageous, um, saying that it takes five to 20 kilos of, of, of feed to, to produce one kilo of salmon. And that's not even physically possible for, for the fish. And the further, the deeper I looked, the more I realized that not only the information on the, on the movie, which in various sectors from NGOs to, to Scottish salmon um, and, and right through uh, to the fishing industry had been exaggerated and or had taken data that was decades old, which is totally irrelevant. Now, it was important for us to, of course, stand up for our own segment, which was feed, and ask for that outrageous claim to be removed from the website, um, which it was, which we're very grateful for. Um, others have to stand up as well and look for things that are, have been said in the incorrect way and put their complaints in. Netflix is collecting all the complaints. So we'll be interested to see what they do about that. So if you do have something out there in your sector that has been mentioned that's wrong, send through the science, get it out there and, and let's see if, if we can make a difference. Um, it would be great to see if uh, it can be re, you know, taken off the air possibly and, and redone until the claims are absolutely correct and relevant for today. Well, and that's really amazing uh, results. So congratulations, because it is really important that, uh, that we address these misconceptions and fallacies when they're, when they're sort of broadcast. And especially with such a big soapbox, of course, that's, uh, that can be dangerous for our industry, which is really populated by and operated uh, by people who are passionate about the oceans and sustainability and keeping the health of the oceans. And you know, I was thinking as this was all developing, because it really was a shockumentary. I mean, there was just so many fallacies, but not only that, the, the techniques used really uh, served to achieve, you know, a certain objective and a certain perspective. Uh, but I really was thinking that for years, our sector has really not been prepared to deal with uh, these sorts of things if they ever came up. I would say that you and your company were probably better prepared uh, for this situation than anybody, but not many companies have individuals that are both passionate about this business and have this marketing perspective and this sort of 
uh, focus around brand marketing. So maybe tell me a bit about that, about your role as a brand strategist and, and marketer and how that uh, prepared you for the situation. Absolutely. There's one thing that uh, I've been saying a lot there, wherever possible, is we need more people. I need more friends, please. Hire people like me. Um, we definitely have to improve in this area. Branding and marketing is, is a key success across all segments of, of, of consumer goods. And food marketing is, is a huge segment. And so there are fantastic people out there working in uh, fast-moving consumer goods seg segments and all other areas, even in uh, meat and dairy and so forth. So people like me exist out there. Um, it's just a matter of, of, of creating roles and, and bringing us in. I know the temperature out there so I can be prepared I in Bioma, we created a, a a little movie about the use of um, marine ingredients inside of um, um, diets prior to the release of Seaspiracy because we thought that this is something that would come up because we know that our information just sounds boring from a feed company and people don't know this stuff and so many times on social media I come up against people and say what there's so little fish inside of a, a fish diet and they're completely surprised they think that it's a hundred percent eighty percent of of the diet um, so we haven't done a good job as an industry to tell the stories we've been always in a defense mode where we're all always trying to defend ourselves so we have to sort of really move on to um onto the attack here you know let's let's get much more offensive and 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 actually tell our story we have made such huge um, achievements. A couple of decades ago, there was no such thing as a responsible farming certification. Now we have that across the aquaculture sector. Um, captured fisheries is in reduction. It's stabilised and it is, is being reduced. Feed has completely been revolutionised, but people just don't know about that. So they know all the old stories that have been out there, but they haven't. We've been too busy. We've probably been too busy making the changes. But it's very important that we have people like myself out there to tell those stories and tell them in a way that consumers can embrace them. Well, and that's very true. And that's actually a great point in that we often get caught up in, in the facts, you know, which of course are important. But we, we many people, I guess maybe because the industry is really driven, at least on the agriculture side, by, by scientists at the end of the day or, or, or people who are very, very focused on objectivity, which is important. And the reality is that the average individual is perhaps not driven as much uh, uh, by information as they are on how information is packaged. And I wonder uh, why it is most producers seem to be slow to adopt brand marketing strategies, the same strategies you see in other food sectors. Well, I think mainly people haven't seen um, the success of it, and 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 they think that some of these companies that have achieved great success through their brand have done it by accident, and it's no accident. It's actually completely strategically decided. We have so many customers that are in the aquaculture industry, so we get a chance to be able to talk to them, and and. Through a lot of those dialogues, we are promoting. Maybe you need somebody in this in this role. Our, our farmers just need to see it. So I'm hoping that we're moving towards where you suddenly see this small, medium-sized uh, farmer in Norway suddenly got a brand that's that's becoming very relevant across the U.S. Now that on the back of great brands like Atlantic um, Sapphire and New Zealand King Salmon, the, the Lasso, um, Schooner Bay, you know, on the backs of all of these brands, people can see actually this is no fluke. That makes sense. And, it, and you may be seeing critical mass now. I mean, I remember when I launched a brand in 2011, really it was completely glazed look over, over one's eyes to say, you know, I really <laughs> don't know how you're going to do this. It sounds like a big scam to me. But offline, you're telling me about your uh, motivation. I grew up on a dairy farm. Uh, my family have been generational dairy farmers. So much of the conversation was uh, on the dinner table was the price of milk. So we were, our lives were ruled by the commodity market. And 
and I grew up thinking, how can I make a difference to my fa- to my family? And so I went to, to school and got a graphic design uh, degree and then followed that through with a master's of, of marketing on the objective of trying to find those strategies and techniques to make a difference to my family. How can my family get out of this commodity world and, and into something that's more stable? Um, and that's branding. I learned the techniques of the big FMCG uh, world and, and I brought that back in. I, I first worked with Australian eggs to dispel the myths around eggs and cholesterol, which was a fantastic global success. That campaign changed the perception of eggs literally overnight in two weeks. And then with that campaign got launched across the world. And now people don't even half the people don't remember the that eggs would, you know, affect your cholesterol level. From that I went, I, I came into New Zealand King King Salmon and helped there um, with the Aura King. But even if you look at Aura King Salmon and New Zealand King Salmon, the company's not run by a farmer. Okay, the company is run by a marketer. All of his product range has a branding at different levels of the market from the low grade to the high grade. So it, it, he's operating in, in, in um, improving the value of the product, even though they've, they've barely got any more water space in the entire time that Grant's been there. But the company continues to succeed. So he's moving the value parameter. Would you say, would you say that that's the most important thing? is is people well uh, people is absolutely important and and marketing is intricate in the business strategy you know where are you going how do you want to get there what have you got to sell if you have a product that is not reliable any brand that you create can lose its equity just as fast as it gain or faster than it gained it so it, but if you're at a stage where you feel that you have a stable great product that has a particular position bring in a marketer, a strategist to come in and tell, figure out what your story is. Well, and that's absolutely right. I mean, it's not just about uh, the blocking and tackling, but it's, it's literally finding what makes one's operation different. When in your process and in your experience in, in your various roles, some of these great brands, I mean, what of your brand was driven by this sort of uniqueness or the story you want to tell and what was feedback or insights on the customer and what they were interested in. Obviously you have to consider both, but when you're in a, when you're in a, a segment that is underbranded, which is what we're in, it's a green field. You can tell your story. A lot of it, um, the examples that, that I've had in the seafood were actually really about just finding that individual story. And then of course, is that individual story, story a clear differentiation from the rest of the market? Can somebody else make that claim? Because if somebody else can make that claim on your brand, then you will eventually that lose the equity in your brand. So you have to find that unique identifying point. Well, that is really exciting because <laughs> as marketers in this sector, obviously we want to we wanna hear there's lots of green space and not as much competition. But one thing, and I always, I think recently I've been sort of thinking that, okay, we've had almost these phases in the seafood sector over the years, and you could even just focus in on aquaculture, and it more or less has been a long phase of production focus. And then, you know, if there's market activity, it's really tactically sales focused. And I really believe the next gains for this sector, and I believe the sector is about to explode there's just this reluctance to earmark the investment towards it because there's just this real fear of, well, if I open another, you know, if I expand my operation, you know, I can put more fish in the sea or perhaps I open a processing facility. Well, I have something tangible and I can identify the value of that. How have you handled those kind of conversations? Well, you know, the, the problem in the commodity world is that price, volume, turbulence constantly what a brand enables you to do is actually step out of that you have a brand that has earned a certain value proposition which is connected to a price point so your forecasting is going to be a lot easier and understanding uh, what you you can do from a business side and where you you know 
ultimately you try to create a range of products because not every fish that comes out of the, the sea is going to be perfect. So you need to have a strategy around your entire portfolio and start thinking of it as a portfolio of fish. It's not just the one, the one fish sitting in there or the two different species that you might be farming. Inside of that pen, you have A grade, B grade, C grade product. Your A grade product can be that of a premium, high price point um, product. Your B grade can be going to another sector, maybe slightly smaller fish, uh, whatever rationale from a production side that you bring it on to B. And then even your C grade, which may be considered some of the not perfect sold fresh or frozen product is, is actually fantastic for smoked salmon or something where you, where you don't have to worry so much about how it looks. So you have to have this kind of, how do you manage your farm? How do you brand around that to get the maximum price for the product that is inside of the, your, your farm? One day, suddenly you've got a lot of A grade and the next day you've got a, a lot of C grade where you need to know how to deal with that product and where to move it within your market. So it is a business decision that maximizes value if you get it right. It almost seems like perhaps uh, building this business case around embracing branding is more about the strategy than than being able to say tangibly and quantifiably, well, this is what this is going to get you. Because the reality is you, you maybe just have to look around and say, look, our business is becoming, it's getting out of its infancy. It's time to, um, it's time to really embrace strategies that other food businesses have embraced, and that is brand marketing. So where do you think the first big move that's going to shake up the market from a brand perspective will come from? Will it be Norway? Will it be Chile? Will it be someone else? I mean, what do you see happening? I'm, I'm not sure. I think that I, I felt that uh, Maui might be the one to to take that big step. You know, being they 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 uh, invested uh, a lot of money um, to in, into branding, and um, I'm excited to see how that turns out. But there's there's so many fascinating things. I was just thinking now of Quave Arctic, who who have come up with a range of salmon hot dogs and and burgers. You know, so they are taking some some of the low grade product that you know is not the best uh, once you've got the perfect and they're turning it into into a valued product you know we have to start to rethink that we're not that we are creating a food and how can we make that food the best it can be take the dairy industry they're not just selling milk they have all the ice cream and yogurt and cheese so how do we get beyond this 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 commodity type mindset and and embrace the opportunities that 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 are out there beyond a fresh fillet sitting in a counter so there's a lot that has to be done from re-merchandising in in retail and rethinking our space branding images packages um, these are all going to help consumers get trust um, the the pre-package will also help with we have a food that's highly tangible you know and, and goes off very very fast so anything that that makes it stay fresher for longer is going to help with that as well and that brings another level of trust and assurance to the product it takes marketers and branders to get into the company and be hired who can open you up to the world of the entire food category and start learning from other industries not commodity industries but fast moving consumer goods well, actually, Catherine, one thing uh, that really ties in with what you do and your company does, and again, you know, when you're in the branded world and you're out in front of the customer, you always get this question about feed. What's in the feed? Obviously, when it comes to the feed, the big, the big issue to be concerned about is that, that, that we're not, you know, taking fish and overfeeding fish into into with aquaculture the use of different raw materials enables you to get your fish in fish out ratio down but that's just one of many sellable attributes you you could have by utilizing the feed you can also increase the omega-3 levels on on your fish you can in, even increase the vitamin d so you have an opportunity to use feed as part of your branding story wouldn't it be wonderful in in 
the in, in the Nordic part of the world or where the sun doesn't shine in the, in the middle of winter to get your vitamin D from your fish you know, rather than popping a, a pill. Of course, the microalgae is a big thing that we've all been hearing about, not only because it enables us to bypass the forage fish to get to the original source of omega-3s, and that, of course, reduces our dependency on the need for forage fish. But Quave Arctic actually has extremely high levels of omega-3 from algae, and they actually ended up creating a fish that is delectable. It has a very unami texture. It's very oily. It's very rich. So it actually then starts to implement on the texture and the taste of, of, of the product. You know, you know, grass-fed beef, corn-fed chicken. What about algae-fed seafood? You know, that that also has a story in itself. So the feed is a, can be part of your brand story if you want to leverage it up. But it's also vitally important to ensuring that you've got a nutrient-dense, textured right, flavoured right product. A good reminder that marketing is not only about a story. It's not only about a unique point of differentiation. It's not about packaging only. It's not about a beautiful website or social media or point of sale, but it also can be about the product and it should be about the product at the end of the day. And that product innovation is an important part of this uh, marketing mix. So I think you've really identified something that you can truly differentiate yourself through brand marketing, not only through the story and the messaging, but also through that product innovation uh, that you just talked about. Real important. Exactly. What last sort of thing would you want to say to a producer who's, who's watching this and, you know, maybe not quite convinced or trying to decide if this is the right strategy for them? We have to understand that the United Nations has said seafood and aquaculture, be it algae, mussels, fish, needs to expand six times its current level. And so we have a huge opportunity to bring food security to, to the world. So the growth is there. The market is there. The world is supporting us. We have a low carbon footprint product, you know, so we have something that is, is, is should be a, a choice for center of the plate, especially on the reduction of, of, of meats out there. So the world is your oyster. Get out there embrace it because the market is there the volume is there it's only going to get larger so go in and take your slice of the pie that's great i think we'll leave it there thanks catherine this has been catherine Breyer, global head of marketing and branding with biomar a uh, really great conversation on the importance and uh, future of brand marketing in the seafood sector thank you very much for joining us catherine i've enjoyed it Thank you. It was great fun. Thanks, Dave. And we look forward to getting some more people into the market.